2024 Tesla Expo and birthday. We're really enjoying ourselves. It's cool down. We're here on Long Island, New York. And Tom, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's Tom, a pleasure. Tom is a CTO of Zebra Technologies. I understand today's sponsor, probably a sponsor throughout the year. Yes, that's right. Uh, you probably have some great stories about what Tesla means to your company. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But uh, CTO of uh, Zebra, welcome. That's right. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Tell me, tell me what a day like this uh, means to you and your company. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, you know, we're, we were um, founded, actually, uh, part of our company was founded here on Long Island uh, at a Stony Brook University. Um, we oh, make wow. barcode reading technology and barcode printing technology. And we were later acquired by a company that's based out of Chicago, Zebra Technologies. But uh, the barcode reading part of the company was founded right here in Long Island, just down the road in wow. Holtzville. Um, before that in Bohemia, actually, uh, by a laser, laser physicist by the name of Dr. Jerome Schwartz. Uh, okay. That was uh, at Stony Brook. And from laser technology, we made the first handheld barcode reader and then imaging technology. And the wow. cool thing is this. Um, what, I knew there was going to be some correlation. Yeah, you, you, you know there's something cool is about to happen. Uh, was that <laughs> using that barcode reading technology, we realized if we could make it mobile uh, and allow a mobile computer to actually read those barcodes and then communicate that back to a network, we could create a lot more value, like doing inventory in an aisle or when you get a package delivered at your front door and the signature gets taken and the barcode gets read. So we were actually a founding member, and a lot of uh, people don't know this, of the IEEE committee that created yeah. the 802.11 standard, which we all know is Wi-Fi. And then we were the first company to put Wi-Fi into a handheld mobile computer, and that wireless technology basically blew up all these different types of applications. Yeah. And um, you know, here on Long Island, 20 minutes away, we have a thousand people uh, in our in our Holtzville facility, and right down the road is you know this lab, the last standing uh, lab or working lab of Nikola Tesla. And why not make the connection and sponsor it? We it's have a, perfect. a massive amount of engineers that are passionate about RF technology and inventors like Nikola. So, for so, example, uh, tonight, right, yeah. we're doing a drone show. Yes. Isn't that RF technology? It is, absolutely. In fact, I was just speaking with the drone guys, and I was uh, drilling them on that. I'm like, hey, how does this all work? And, uh, yeah, they're using 900 megahertz RF technology to control these 200 drones. Uh, so you know more than me. How does it How do they not collide? Well, I, I don't probably know that much more than okay. you, but I'm probably 10 minutes ahead of you because I, okay, <laughs> I spent okay. a little bit of time with the guys. But um, yeah, they've got a, a whole host of software that basically goes from the images they want to create to mapping the uh, cool. location in space where those drones are going to go. And then they showed me on tripods, they have some relatively large antennas. One's a receiver, one's a transmitting antenna. Right. And so the drones are sending back telemetry information dynamically to a computer system they wow. have. There, and the computer system's transmitting back out. So they sort of have this closed loop, they know where the drones are, they know where they should be, and they just map them in real time. It's so, so cool. I, yeah. I, I know nothing about this, but I'm starting to imagine now, and then LEDs go on and off in color exactly. with that same computer connection. Exactly, and then that's creating the images we're all going to see wow. in a couple hours, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Sun's going down here, we're having a great time. Yes. Uh, well attended, by the way, and the rain has uh, stopped completely. It's yes. dry now and actually comfortable. Yeah. As a board member, um, what do you find most satisfying about what you're doing as a board member here? Yeah. Well, you know, I think bringing back um, the legacy of Tesla and, you know, we, we were very deliberate. The founders were and, you know, I was fortunate enough to be a part of it. So this was decided well ahead of me. But there's a reason why we call it the Tesla Science Center and mm -hmm. not a Tesla Museum or Tesla Historical Society. Um, it's really to be a place where science, um, passion for science, young uh, people that are uh, passionate or can be attracted to STEM technology and doing that in a really diverse fashion. Um, that's what we're going. That's what this the center is going to be. And so the rewarding, exciting part about it is not just recognizing the legacy, as I said, of Nikola Tesla, but using this um, as a space. Ultimately, that's going to become a science, technology, right? You know, a, mathematics. A launch pad to push um, further. Exactly right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mike, Michael Russo used the words, "We want this to be Gettysburg level." Yes. And I was so excited about that. Yeah. To have that in Little Old Shoreham, right? right. Uh, yeah. And and even to some extent, Long Island. Uh, although what I'm hearing now, there's a kind of a trifecta, if not more. You have BNL right up the street. That's you have right. Stony Brook, which you talk about. Yes. And now this uh, eventual science center. Yes. And there's probably some other great facilities Cold that Spring I'm, Harbor Labs. Yeah. As an example. That's what sure. I'm missing. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Great yeah. news. Uh, so today, your company and your and some of your um, uh, co uh, co-workers yes. are there greeting people. They are. What are you showing? Yeah. So we have a whole uh, host of our different um, uh, mobile computing technologies. So. These are devices that uh, read barcode, they connect to wireless uh, networks, they run various types of applications. Um, they're highly rugged and they're designed to do a lot of intensive data capture. So using things like RFID as well as barcode ring. And when I say data capture, think about um, 
you know, if you're delivering parcels or you're taking inventory, um, even like uh, taking inventory, say, in an apparel store, there's a lots of different skews or variations on sizes, colors, and so on. So you want to be able to take that inventory as quickly as you can. And That's with some amazing. of our devices, we can read the RFID hang tags on that apparel up to maybe 10, 15 feet away. So you can just kind of wander around a rack. I remember the and first time the I experienced what you're speaking about, yeah. and you're probably going to have an example. Was like in a big supermarket. Uh -huh. I remember, you know, being in Stop and Shop. I was like, "What is this device?" You know, this is maybe 10, 15 years ago. Right. Uh, that's probably either taking inventory or what, what else would it do? Would it only take inventory? No, or? no. So it's it's a full mo Android-based mobile computer. Yep. So we use it for communication, collaboration in the front of the store to talk to the back of the store. We can even route calls right. from incoming calls to the store. So like DIY retailers like Home Depot and Lowe's use that to be able to get you know the plumbing question right down to the right expert that's in the so aisle, cool. right down to the device. Um, it's used uh, extensively now for like customer assistance and client telling. So you know you have a I'll use the DIY example again. You have a question on a pipe fitting. You know, you, you can uh, bring up the various types of fittings that'll work for what you're trying to accomplish and kind of have a little in-aisle consultation, you know, with the customer That's right there in the aisle and then check the stock and the inventory and just have that right at your fingertips. What are you guys doing with AI, if anything, right? We're doing a lot with AI. So um, two big areas where we're driving around AI. One is in the computer vision space. Um, and so we're, we're doing a lot with things like product recognition. In fact, it's another cool thing we're showing over here. Which yeah, I'm going to go look. For yeah, sure. it's, it's pretty neat. It's if if, any, if you've ever used self checkout. Um, I just used know, it this morning the, at the Home Depot. There you, there you go. You know, and uh, and I love it to yeah, be honest. Yeah, and there's so much opportunity we're also seeing for improvement. So think, I'll give you an example. The demo we have here, you put a piece of produce, you know, a pepper, a banana, an apple, or whatever, right on the scanner. Yeah. And it automatically, using computer vision, detects what produce that Makes is. Makes sense. So you're not trying to hunt and peck through this, I this know. menu. Alphabetical banana, what kind of banana? Exactly. So we're, we're automating that with computer vision. There's a whole host of other computer vision applications, like um, being able to verify that a shelf is in the in compliance. So are there out of stocks? Just by taking a picture of the shelf, um, are there items that are misplaced? And that's got a lot of advantage for retailers because it allows them to kind of make sure, sure. the shelf is optimized and you and I as shoppers have the best experience. Um, another area uh, that we're showcasing, we're doing this together, we did an announcement a couple of months ago okay. with Google and Qualcomm, and we're, we're enabling generative AI down on the device, which obviously is a big topic today, for being able to assist the workers that are in the store with maybe if, let's say you're new on the job and yep. you say, hey, you know, somebody's returning an item, they have the receipt they bought the item with, but they don't have the credit card they purchased it with. What do I do? Like, how do I reimburse them in that situation? And they can just ask that question in plain English, and boom, have the answer pop up. In fact, they can ask the question in any language and have the question, you know, returned back in their native language, even though the standard operating procedure that says what you should do is all written in English, perhaps. So it's a really, um, you know, it's a, it's a really amazing technology that's going to yeah, allow workers to become you know, just way more efficient. And one of the things we're seeing, it's, it's returning... Um, you know, a lot of empowerment and job satisfaction to those workers. So well, they can do higher value tasks. It's, it's the funny you say that because uh, the, the conventional thinking is that, if, I hate to say it, like my mom goes, everybody's going to not have a job anymore. And I'm like, no, the embracement of this is you can get just more done. Yeah. And you can really direct an army of people to do things just incredible. We're just going to get yes. better at what we do. I, yeah. I I don't look at it as a threat yeah. at all. The last few yeah. things I've done, I've used ChatGPT to get it done. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, there was some, something funny. I um, Oh, I'll give you an example. I was looking into whether I can use electric heat matting under floors uh -huh. for my whole house and not just the bathroom. Right. And I got that answer. It's like, no, that's just, that doesn't make sense. It's it's not yep. efficient enough to do that. Yes. And what's amazing about that is that folks that don't use it, you give them that answer, and like, oh, I learned something, and and then they're going to start to use it. So Absolutely. we have this intelligent explosion, if nothing else. That's right. Yeah, it is pretty amazing, and it, it's interesting you say that around, you know, technology potentially replacing people, and I think. That was a you know um, probably a hotter topic even before generative AI. Like if I say like four or five years That's ago, right. there's a lot of automation or robots, robots and, right. and there's more and more of those coming out. But um, we've done it's quite a number of studies out there. But one of them was with Corn Ferry. Um, we've looked at some data, and this has been published in a whole bunch of different places. But just given the aging population globally, and the you know, demographics and the dynamics around the working population. There's an anticipation, not to geek out too much here, but by the end of the decade, there's going to be a shortage globally of like 80 million workers, you know, which is like more than the population of Germany. It's like a massive number. So the now the whole third thing of our kind of, population, the, the whole oh. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or oh, yeah, fourth, quarter, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know, the, the whole thing is going to kind of come around, which is like 
That's cool. We can't even get done what we need to get done. Yeah. You know, and that's the evident already, have, by the way. It, yeah. And it really is, especially when you look at, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Even when you look at things like inflation and wage yeah. inflation and everything else. So yeah. it'll be, um, it's going to be interesting times. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. Yeah. Well, uh, I can think of no better person to be assimilated with this uh, wonderful well, organization. Yeah. As you can see, folks, we're looking at the uh, lab. We're here in Shoreham, New York. Yep. Uh, I know I'm talking to a worldwide audience because Nikola Tesla was a worldwide figure. Yep. So uh, thanks for joining me, Tom. Thank and, you. Thanks uh, for having I'm me. I'm going to come it's... visit your booth. I really love oh, what awesome. you do. Oh, awesome. Please do. And if you want to come down the road, see us at Zebra. We're happy to host you. And, oh, I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, you know humbling to me. So uh, I appreciate you recognizing me be on the board. But uh, you know it's, it's, it's uh, incredible to be associated with it. Absolutely so, welcome. Thank you. You take care. Thanks. You as well.